Hello, and welcome to this video introduction of the 2022 Permit Technician Checklist. In the previous video, you learned about how to access the checklist and the types of residential alteration projects they serve. In this video, we'll look at a sample checklist to see how it's organized. Then we'll walk through a permit intake scenario so you can see the checklist in action. In general, each checklist has between four to six pages. Each page serves a distinct purpose, and this organization is used across your set of checklists for ease of quick reference. Page one and two of this checklist focuses on a high-level summary of the essentials. The essentials page is organized into parts that help you answer these four critical questions. Does the scope of the permit application trigger the energy code? Does it meet the energy code's requirements under the prescriptive approach? Does the HVAC change trigger insulation requirements in a vented attic? Are the necessary prescriptive forms included with the permit application? Note that sometimes further energy code details are provided in footnotes. You'll find the full list of footnote text on page 4. Page 3 offers a list of FAQs, or frequently asked questions. Topics here cover common project scenarios or typical questions from permit applicants. If the applicant has questions like these, consider giving a copy of this checklist to them for further reference. Page 4 provides a full list of footnotes cited in the Energy Code tables on pages 1 and 2. Page 5, the final page of the checklist provides a list of direct links to a variety of energy code resources on the checklist topic. Websites listed are generally from the California Energy Commission or Energy Code Ace. Giving the applicant a printout of their own will also provide them with this list of websites for more information. The types of resources listed on page 5 include cited sections of energy code, Applicable resources on Energy Code Ace, such as fact sheets and compliance forms. Now that you've seen how these checklists are structured, let's practice using them for quick reference during application intake. We'll stick with our HVAC checklist and return to the high-level summary of this topic on page 1. A permanent applicant is looking to replace her HVAC system with a new package one and will also replace all the ducting. This is the only change she is making in her home. We'll zoom in to look at part one of this page. Given what's shown, would this type of project trigger the energy code? Yes, according to the checklist, a total HVAC replacement would trigger the energy code. Replacing part of an HVAC system would as well. Extensive home renovations or building department requires building design plans would be supported in this checklist. Does it meet the energy code's requirements under the prescriptive approach? Yes, according to the table, a project that has a new heating, ventilation, and air conditioning system and greater than equals 75% new ducts can use the prescriptive approach. Be aware, though, that a footnote is also cited for this scenario in the table. That likely means some additional requirements apply. A quick consult of footnote H on page 4 shows more information. HERS refrigerant charge verification is not prescriptively required in climate zone 10 when refrigerant containing components such as the compressor, condensing coil, evaporator coil, refrigerant metering device, or refrigerant piping are altered or added. When you use your checklists, note that you won't need to read all footnotes or even most of them. Just be sure to review any footnotes cited for the specific scenario you are evaluating for permit approval. When applicable, mandatory requirements can also appear in the checklist essentials page. In this case of a complete age back replacement, mandatory measures do apply. The next question is Does the age back change trigger insulation requirements in a vented attic? In this case, you determine the project is located entirely in a vented attic, so it does trigger insulation requirements. The final question to ask in evaluating the permit application is if all required energy compliance forms were submitted. Part 4 of the checklist page can help with this. Let's say the homeowner didn't submit any energy code forms. What's missing? 
The table in Part 4 has the required forms by project scenario. In this case, the project involves a ducted system and replaces AC in an existing building. So this project will require submission of compliance form CF1R-Alt-02E. If the permit applicant asks any further questions about the project, such as what forms the building inspector will require, you may wish to consult the list of frequently asked questions on page 3. This wraps up part 2 of the permit checklist videos. Remember that page 1 and 2 contain the most essential information for you to perform your permit approval and where you'll spend most time consulting. We hope you find the checklist and training video useful as you continue your work reviewing incoming permit applications. Be sure to check out the other sections that are of interest. If you have questions and comments about the technical requirements or compliance process, you can contact us at energycodeace.com by clicking the link at the bottom of the page. You'll need to be signed in at Energy Code Ace to access the request form. Or reach out to the CEC by emailing or phoning their call center. If you think this content was helpful, please consider clicking the like button. And we encourage you to add a comment to give us more detailed feedback. To stay up to date on the latest Energy Code Ace offerings that will help you comply, be sure to follow us on LinkedIn. Facebook, and YouTube.